Grüß Gott, schönen guten Tag. Ich bin Billy Badger und das ist jetzt die siebte Woche. Und ja, es ist langsam Zeit, über die Zeit nachzudenken. Herzlich willkommen. This week we're thinking about time phrases, all the different ways of thinking about when we do things. And we've already started to think about word order in sentences. And we know that in German, we value information about time and put it as often as not nice and close to the start of the sentence or as close to the subject and verb as we can get it. Now, there's no point listing every possible time phrase. You'll find lots of useful ones in chapter seven of your textbook. But today, we want to introduce two sorts of time phrases. First of all, nouns like winter and summer, as well as words we perhaps haven't thought much about as actually being nouns, the days of the week, parts of days, months, seasons, and so on. And as well as this, we're going to be looking at more adverbial phrases, such as the words for today, tomorrow, and so on. But before we get started, let's look quickly at some of our vocab for time. Now, there are lots of words, but here we just want to look at the words for one day. So this is today, heute. And before today came gestern, yesterday. And tomorrow, of course, will be morgen. As you can see, all of these are written without a capital because they simply aren't nouns. They're adverbial phrases. Okay, so let's divide the day up like this. Now, reasonably arbitrarily, but this day starts at midnight and finishes at midnight. So this is die Nacht. Das ist der Vormittag. Oder der Morgen. Then comes der Nachmittag. Pretty much, I guess, any time after 12 or lunchtime, Mittag. After that comes der Abend, the evening. And so combining these with the days for today or even tomorrow or yesterday, we end up with some very useful phrases like heute Morgen, for this morning. And this literally means today morning. We could also say heute Vormittag. So this afternoon would similarly be heute Nachmittag. Tomorrow evening would be morgen Abend. And look closely at the use of capitals here. One's a noun and the other not. Okay, so far so good. But where or when is heute Nacht? And when or where is heute Abend. So hopefully you'll have worked this out for yourselves. Heute Nacht. This was the bit of the day that is already over by the time you get up in the morning. And when we say tonight in English, what we really mean is the evening. So we say heute Abend. Well, time is of course a big topic, but I want to try and narrow it down by looking at time in terms of three prepositions. Prepositions that allow us to say things like in summer or at the weekend, on Thursday, at three o'clock. And as you can see in English, we also use prepositions for time phrases. So we're gonna split our time phrases up into three prepositions, am, um, um, and im. Well, our first preposition is am. Um. Now, we use this for talking about several things, mostly days and parts of days and little groups of days. So while it's der Montag, der Dienstag, der Mittwoch, der Donnerstag, der Freitag, der Samstag und der Sonntag, we'll say am Montag to say on Monday. We'll say am Dienstag to say on Tuesday. Am Mittwoch to say on Wednesday. 
and so on. This allows us then to say things like Wir essen am Montag Pizza or Wir trinken am Samstag Bier. Of course, if you want to simply say today is Monday, you won't need the prepositions. And this just simply becomes heute ist Montag. In which case, of course, morgen ist Dienstag and gestern ist or war Sonntag. We might want to be a bit more specific here and we can talk about the parts of days. So again, while it's der Morgen, der Nachmittag and der Abend, we'll say am Morgen to say in the morning. And similarly, am Nachmittag to say in the afternoon. Am Abend to talk about in the evening. Now, the cool thing about German is, and I'm sure most of us know this by now, is this ability to be able to combine words. So we can simply join these two forms in typical German fashion to come up with phrases like am Samstag Abend for on Saturday evening. And that's all one word. Or perhaps am Mittwoch Morgen for on Wednesday morning. So we can use this to express what we do on certain parts of certain days. Wir gehen Samstagabend in die Kneipe. Ich arbeite am Freitagnachmittag in der Uni. Now you might want to express the idea that this is something you do regularly, maybe every Saturday evening or every Wednesday morning. If so, then you can emphasize the recurring nature of the action by using the word jeden instead of our preposition am. Ich fahre jeden Montag mit dem Bus. Es gibt jeden Freitagabend gute Musik in Hobart. And you'll notice here that there is an en ending on the end of jeden. And this is as we'd expect, because the days and parts of the days in our sentences here are masculine objects. Well, at this stage, it's perhaps also worth introducing an alternative that allows us to express the idea of what we do as a general rule. Well, here, we simply take the time phrases, for example, am Samstag Abend, we drop the preposition and the capital. We end up with Samstagabend and we add an S to the end of this and we get Samstagabends, an adverbial phrase. And this lets me say things, for example, like Wir gehen Freitagabends in die Kneipe. We go to the pub most Friday evenings. Or Wir fahren Samstagabends in die Stadt. We drive into town on Saturday evenings. Or, sie geht Montag morgens einkaufen. She goes shopping most Monday mornings. Or, Sonntag morgens kaufen wir am Wochenmarkt Gemüse. And using the phrases in this way can also express the idea of something that we do as a general rule. We also use the same preposition am when talking about the weekends, whether you're talking about what you do on one particular weekend, what you're going to do next weekend, or what you perhaps did last weekend, or even what you did on weekends in general. So it's a useful phrase, one that we're already familiar with. Am Wochenende. Wir laufen am Wochenende gerne am Strand. We like running on the beach at the weekend. Or maybe sie arbeitet am Wochenende bei Woolworths. She works at the weekend at Woolworths. Or maybe even am Wochenende paddeln wir gern im Süden von Tasmanien. We like kayaking in southern Tasmania at the weekend. Here too we can use the word for every that we used with the days. And this really emphasizes that it's something that we do every weekend. But of course, it's going to have the neuter ending because weekend is neuter rather than masculine like the days of the week. So, jedes Wochenende kaufen wir gern Pizza am Wochenmarkt. Well, okay, this brings us now then to our second preposition, um. This lets us narrow things down to things that occur at a certain time of the day. So if you play computer games at nine o'clock, then we can say Sie spielt um neun Uhr Computerspiele. 
Now at this stage you might ask yourself is this nine o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the evening? Well we already know some phrases that are going to help us out here because Germans don't use little am and pm words that we use. Instead they use these words that we've already met. Sie spielt um 9 Uhr abends Computerspiele to say that she plays at nine o'clock in the evening. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with putting that time phrase out the front. So we can say um 9 Uhr abends essen wir gern Pizza. But not everything starts, of course, at nine or 10 o'clock. So we're going to have to use other little prepositions to express the ideas like 10 past or 5 to. For example, der Bus fährt um 10 nach 2 nach Lena Valley. The bus goes 10 past 2 to Lena Valley. Or das Konzert beginnt um 20 vor 9. The concert starts or begins at 20 to 9. Now to help us out here, we need some other useful words like the noun Viertel, which allows us to express ideas like a quarter to or a quarter past. Die Straßenbahn kommt um Viertel nach zehn. The tram comes at a quarter past ten. Or der Film beginnt abends um Viertel vor zehn. The film begins in the evening at a quarter to ten. Now we'll discuss this and more in our classes during the week, but it's worth pointing out that the Germans view the concept of half past somewhat differently to us, and this can lead to confusion. So if you hear someone say, wir treffen uns um halb zehn im Museum, does this mean you'll meet at half past ten in the museum? And no, sadly it does not. If you arrive at half ten, you'll be an hour late. Because halb zehn doesn't mean half past ten, it means halfway to ten o'clock. In other words, half past nine. So a little confusing at first, I think you'll agree. Now if you want to find out what time it is, you ask, wie spät ist es? And here you simply answer with the normal time phrases that we've been using, but without the preposition. This is the same as the way we do it in English. Well, this brings us now to our final preposition, im. Now, don't confuse this with a word we already know, in, with an N on the end, which we use for phrases like ich wohne in Hobart. No, this is im, with an M on the end. And it's a kind of a contraction that for our purposes here means in the. So this preposition is limited for use with seasons and months when we're talking at least about time phrases. So im Winter bin ich gern in den Bergen. Im Sommer bin ich gern am Markt. And of course the Germans also have four seasons. So we'll also have im Herbst in autumn. Im Herbst ist Tasmanien am schönsten. And im Frühling for in spring. And our months fall into the same category. So we can use these also with our preposition im. So I can say, for example, er hat im Juni Geburtstag. It's his birthday in June. Der kleine See ist im April sehr schön. Or im Januar ist in der Stadt viel los. There's a lot going on in the city in January. Of course, rather than saying what happens in certain months, you can also simply talk about the seasons themselves. Der Herbst in Tasmanien ist sehr schön. Or maybe, der Winter in Tasmanien ist sehr kalt. Well, I hope that went okay. There's a lot to take in here, lots of vocab. So learn which time phrases get used with um, which with um, and which with im. It always helps to work with categories. And of course, Übung macht den Meister. So head over now to your textbook, read through Part C Struktur, where I explain it in a bit more detail. Try some of the Übungen für Kapitel 7. Und so, das war's dann für heute und diese Woche. 
Ich wünsche Ihnen eine schöne Woche und wie immer, wenn Sie Fragen haben, schreiben Sie sie unten in den Kommentaren. Alles Gute, auf Wiedersehen und Tschüss.